now we have uh, the interesting part, which is, uh, so our first talk for today is uh, Dr. Teresa Gomez Diaz, uh, and she'll be talking to us on the evaluation of research software, the CDUR procedure. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, thank you to you. I will share the screen. And then I don't know how to do this as well. So uh, then I come back here, and then I come back here. Uh, I think that is okay. So uh, thank you for you to be here. Thank you to you. Thank you to Alison and the source team because of this uh, invitation to present our work on the RSA software evaluation. This is a collaboration work with Thomas Rezio that should be here with us today, but he's finding some connection problems. So I hope he will be back. Uh, he's a professor in Spain and I am working uh, uh, in a CNRS laboratory near Paris. Uh, the motivation of this work is uh, partially uh, uh, the recent evaluation of my laboratory. Laboratories in France are evaluated almost uh, every four or five years, and we had one recent uh, evaluation, and we did the list of, of all the production, and in particular we found that there were a list of uh, cystic cis uh, research software. Uh, and most of this production is disseminated with a free open source license. And the question was how to take uh, this research production into consideration. And, and we are also working with Thomas in the global context of open science, and we had uh, studied two recent uh, expert groups, uh, expert groups for, uh, sorry, two reports by uh, expert groups for the European Commission. And you have here the references. Um, it was very interesting that uh, to see that uh, uh, recent work for the European Commission is uh, starting to mention uh, the software, the use and the production uh, as uh, to be included in open science best practice. Um, the second report, uh, uh, it says it's, it studies a lot of things and related uh, to open science. And, um, explains very well how, which is the role of the evaluation of research. Um, so the goal of this talk is to present you this uh, recent publication in the journal F. Mill Research, and that took uh, a lot of time for writing. Uh, we wrote this work because we, we understood that the software production is not currently assessed in the research evaluation. And we need to to put this this uh, co in the uh, this problem in the context of the open science evolutions. We choose this uh, journal uh, because there was a science policy research section, and also because of the open peer review procedure, that is for us very important. Um, some uh, notes here: uh, I will use uh, a lot. R is as research software, and um, all the numbers in brackets refer to the um, to the references in this second version of the paper. So the goal of this talk is to present you uh, this uh, protocol uh, uh, that is very flexible and it has four steps. The first one is citation. Um, it deals with the clear identification of the research software as a research production. The second one is the dissemination, where we look for uh, the best practice in the dissemination. Uh, the third uh, is the, uh, the use step, where we look of uh, software aspects of the research software. And the last step, we are looking for uh, the, all the research aspects. We will see this in more detail. So this is the plan of the talk. We have seen already the context and the goals. And we are going to look to the main concepts that are very important to, to, understood, to understand very well uh, this, these concepts. 
uh, the first one is the research software concept. I have no time to go through all these uh, different uh, definitions. Uh, we did look for a lot of uh, publications uh, in order to understand how it, the scientific world, world understood uh, research software. One of the oldest references is this one by Partha and David. Uh, it was very funny uh, to say, to, to see how they understood that research software was a spillover of the research work, but a positive one. So this, this is very good. The, the work of Diane, Diane Kelly and collaborators, very interesting one, uh, uh, a very clear definition of what scientific software is. Uh, it's developed to answer a scientific question. It relies on the close involvement of a scientific expert, and it provides data to be examined by the expert. Um, we have other, we did some work also in France. Uh, this definition is very short and very clear, software developed by science for scientists. Uh, there is this person, Simon Hedrick in UK, that also did another definition on the NASA uh, report uh, that uh, says that research, you see the evolution of the vocabulary. They were speaking about scientific software and now they are speaking about research software. And so what that researchers developed to aid their work, their scientific work. As you can see here, we are speaking about science. Um, and Diane Kelly also says what is scientific software and what is not scientific software. Um, but when you, I come back a bit, when you say uh, research software, that this software that the researchers develop to aid their science, there are no this kind of limits. So it was very interesting uh, to see what, uh, what was in this paper. Um, the very importance of the correctness. If the software gives the wrong answer, all other qualities become irrelevant. So uh, this was also an observation in our work. No one speaks here about if the software is uh, very well done, is disseminated or no, the quality, the scope, the size, there is a documentation. No one cares a lot about this. The important thing is the scientific work, the correctness of the scientific work. So in our article, we propose this uh, definition. Research software is a well-identified set of code that has been written by a well-identified research team. It is software that has been built and used to produce a result publishes or disseminated in some article or scientific contribution. The software includes a set of files that contains the source code, the compiled word code, if any. And maybe there are many other things as documentation, test, specifications, license, use case, etc. So what we observe in this definition is what is done is the software, the code mainly, who does it, very important, is the author, the person that writes the code, the code but also uh, the contributors of uh, scientific experts and um, to make what? To make research, to make the scientific work and that means that the, there is asso associated publications. And the important point again is the quality and the correctness of the produced scientific results. Um, we didn't try to define software as for us is a legal concept. Uh, you can see uh, the many legal documents that speak about the protection of software as a legal object. Uh, this reference in, in oh, sorry, I come back. Um, do a study uh, software as a legal object and as a legal, uh, sorry, as a research production. And this work is in French, but if you like to have more information, uh, please come back to me, I will be very happy. Uh, here you have two recent work, one publication and one presentation in for them. Um, you can have, um, you can find here more information about our view of research software and obviously there are um, a lot of people working in research software and I you can have you have here three very recent uh, 
references. The second concept is the author. Um, I mentioned already this paper. Uh, author is a legal concept, is the person that writes the code. Uh, but in a laboratory, in a research laboratory, there are a lot of contributions, many different roles. Um, there might be experts that don't write the code, but without this person, the software will not exist. Uh, maybe there are other contributions. So in the paper, we select three different roles. The leader of the project, the main or the important contributor uh, for code writing, and the minor contributor that do uh, less code writing or many other roles, testing, etc. Um, the persons with no code writing can be assigned with some participation percentage of the code writing. This is a team decision. Um, it solves a lot of things in, in, from the legal point of view. The third concept is the publications. The paper do study uh, some of the recent journals. Uh, these journals have appeared more or less after 214, we will say. Um, um, they uh, do publish software papers with software per review. I would like to highlight this image processing online journal, IPOL. Um, I, it's very important for us because in this journal, they publish the article and the software at the same time. And they provide an interface where people can study the software, study the algorithm, in publishing the paper, and check and um, do some examples. And Nate Chuhong uh, keeps a list uh, with uh, a lot more information about journals. These are very general uh, journals. In here, you can find a specific uh, community journal. And I also participate uh, in this national project, French national project, PLIM, where we did some publication of uh, what we call at the time uh, RESA software description cards. Some were, most of them are published in French and some were also presented in English. And we had this concept of validated software. Uh, this is a very interesting concept, but uh, if you have more information, it's all in the FMIL research paper. What it was in, very important for us is to provide a lot of different search interfaces. Th so there was a theme classification, keywords, etc. Because it's very difficult if you don't know the name of the software or the team that is doing the software, it's very difficult to find something. And the last uh, point uh, concept is uh, the reference, and you can see in this uh, in this work, um, the reference is the work of the producer. It's your role to say uh, the, the title, the dates, and um, um, where to find the, the software, etc. And then uh, the user will cite this work using this citation form provided by the producer. Um, the article considers, the article, I say F. Mill Research article, uh, considers three different types of references. The one that is related to, to the research software paper with a software per review procedure. This uh, classic uh, presentation of a research software in a publication. This was the usual way before research uh, software papers uh, were possible, and a reference uh, just uh, explaining all the important information. Uh, as you can see, there can have a software can have very different references. All these three are possible, and there are also much more complete identifications in metadata, metadata sorry, citation files, etc. Uh, excuse me. And there is a lot of work, international work, uh, about software citation. So you have all the references in the FMIL uh, article. So we are here in the evaluation section of the talk. Um, I am not going to go through all this in detail as well, but you all know that uh, all along the career, 
scientific career, we have a lot of evaluations for the thesis, for the career evolution, for the recruitment, uh, in the publication, in, in collaborations, etc. And a lot of this evaluation happens in an international context. Um, but uh, what is important also is self-evaluation. Uh, for example, uh, is the producer of the of the work if uh, uh, this, that decides if the the paper will be sent to a preprint or to a journal, or uh, if uh, this project should be present now to ask uh, for money, or is better to to do next year, and all these decisions evolve in time, and also when we are confronted face to uh, a research uh, evaluation context. So if I'm going to ask for a position next year, I will say I need more articles, so I will work uh, in this way or other way, or I need more projects. Um, grosso modo, there are two evaluation methods, one that takes into consideration the quality, and the second that takes in consideration quantities, uh, metrics, indicators, um, and this uh, should be used with careful attention. There is a lot of work, uh, right, recent work right now, about uh, how to use metrics and how to take care. All this work is very well presented in this Marterson and, and collaborators uh, publication. And uh, what we have found in this Ursula Martin paper is that the social factor is very important and it plays a very important role. And it's sometimes very difficult to find references speaking about this uh, social factor. Um, in, if you see the European Commission expert reports, in here you can find, for example, the Open Science Career Assessment Matrix or uh, a lot of information uh, uh, about how to establish uh, evaluation committees. So this is the last uh, part of the presentation about the protocol of uh, CEDUR. This protocol has been designed to help the evaluated researchers, the evaluation committees, and the decision makers that set the evaluation committees. It's very flexible, and in fact, each decision maker or, or evaluation committee can set its own pro uh, protocol, uh, adapted to the, context, the current context of the evaluation. It has four steps. The first step uh, looks to the good in identification, the good citation form. Um, there are steps you can just check this good citation form or how to uh, other research software have been cited uh, or ask for metadata or ask for best citation practices, etc. There are a lot of uh, different steps proposed. And this is a legal point where the authors and where they work uh, is very important from the legal point of view. The second step is dissemination, uh, where we look uh, to the dissemination practices and if they agree with the scientific poli policy of the evaluation contest, for example, best open science. The policy point is open science and the legal point is licenses. Because uh, the software can be disseminated under a free open source license. The two uh, uh, last steps are the use and the research. The use are looks to the software uh, aspects and the research looks for research scientific aspects. It was very important for us to separate these two roles. When you are looking for software uh, quality and when you are looking for research. And, and here, uh, software of uh, software aspects of research software. So the first thing you look is the correct results. If it's first, the use is by other scientists are is facilitated. And then you can go as far as you like in all the quality software, documentation, testing, etc. Um, 
and in the research you look for for the quality of the scientific work the algorithms the data structures proposed or implemented and the important point is the impact of this research work um, this is the conclusion and last slide uh, what we would like is to to launch a debate on research evaluation protocols it's still too soon to to see if this uh, work will be adopted or by other people um, uh, what is clear is that it is necessary to change research evaluation methods what we expect is that the research software is more accessible and usable by other people, and that there is a lot of contributions, that there is a, a more community building and high quality research. But also, very important, increase the transparency of the evaluation methods. Uh, all these are placed in the context of open science and um, is this also necessary to understand better what open science is. So we have do a very recent publication in which we propose a, a definition of open science as a political and legal framework where the research production is accessible, visible, accessible and reusable. Um, what we say is that um, if we do policies and they stay on the paper, uh, this is no good. We are not going anywhere. So, the, so we hope that this work helps to enforcement, to this form enforcement of open science policies and best research software practices. And I thank you, you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Can we have a virtual round of applause for uh, Theresa? <laughs> um, so we have a couple of questions um, in the chat. Um, first of all, um, does it make sense to define and differentiate between software and scientific software? Excel is used quite heavily by the scientific community, but we are unlikely to call an MS Office application scientific software. Or should we reframe Excel as scientific? I, I will uh, stop the sharing. So, which is the difference between scientific software and software? Uh, as you say, for us and um, for a lot of the references we have looked uh, and study, uh, the author is very important. The role of the person who writes the code. There is a scientific mo motivation. Uh, obviously, a software that uh, started in a research laboratory, then ca they can go away of the laboratory and become uh, software and take another life. But the role of the scientific software, uh, of the scientific person uh, and the scientific con context is very important for us in our view. Um, uh, as Diane Kelly says, there is a scientific question to be answered. So this is for us the, the differences. Thank you. Um, there's one more question, uh, which is, which metrics would you recommend for the U element of the protocol? Or is that beyond its scope? I know there's a bit more detail in the article online, but if you'd like to give us a little bit of information. Oh, um, uh, we don't recommend any, any metrics. There are a lot, if you, a lot, uh, uh, and you can go as far as you like, uh, asking for quality, etc. cetera. Uh, all this is, uh, for us, it corresponds to software aspects. Um, and there is a lot of work and, is, and some issues are very well known. Uh, the metrics that we will look at in the, in the research software is uh, the papers, the work, the collaboration, the projects. Um, but uh, we don't we don't specify some metrics or another. Uh, what uh, people could do is to check the references. There are many references that, that that propose things. But we we don't have a, something that we prefer. 
what the, what is was important for us is to separate when you are looking to the scientific aspects and when you are looking for uh, uh, software aspects because in some of the work we we did the study um, it, it was very mixed uh, we didn't understand very well when you look to one thing or the other thank you um, I hope you don't mind if I ask a question. Um, I'm interested to know whether you think this could be a applied or could it be modified to apply to uh, digital humanities rather than sciences? Uh, well, digital humanities is a very large uh, area. Um, I don't uh, I don't know how to propose a SEDIR protocol for digital humanities. Uh, what we, one of the things we say uh, is that this protocol could be adapted to research data. Once you have um, a clear idea of, of your digital production, uh, then uh, the steps can be can be adapted. The first thing is the is a clear uh, defined object is well disseminated, which are the data aspects and which are the research aspects. It's not very difficult to adapt to to other production. Thank you. Uh, we hope. We hope. <laughs> Thank you very much, Teresa. Thank you um, to you.